What's up guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. I'm Goki and today we're going to be talking about Zhongli's placement on the tier list. We're going to do uh, Xin Yan as well, uh, just to cut a video short. I might dive into more uh, support tier lists later on because there are eventually more characters coming into the game later on during 1.2. December 23rd is going to be our marked date. So I think that's when I'm going to do the support tier list overall. But for now, we're going to cover all the DPS tier list and now everyone here disclaimer is capable of doing damage per second uh very very simple characters here can carry without having a strong dps carries but the difference is these characters across can clear mobs a lot faster than their support character counterparts so with all that being said let's go ahead and get into it so uh previously we put uh, child over Deluke, I've come around. Uh, Deluke is, by and large, the easiest character to use and also one of the most powerful characters to use. He can easily ramp Witch faster than Klee, which is one of the better fire DPS characters to have. He still has that inherent advantage. The only difference is his overall rating is reduced because he just doesn't have that exploration factor outside of being able to mob effectively, possibly more effective than anyone else in the game. We also have Child. Now, the reason why Child would be second place to Deluc is he just doesn't ramp enough damage. Sadly, bows have a lower multiplier than Claymores overall. But if he had a higher Claymore or a higher multiplier, he'd be much, much better than the Luke. But right now, he's uh, sitting down really comfortably at second place on the Abyss God tier list. Uh, official, we already know Official, one of the strongest characters in the game. She's able to clone herself on the battlefield and able to produce massive results, able to mob in a single clearing. You could just use her elemental burst, reposition yourself, leave Oz on the field, move around while Oz is shooting, and then you can place your bow and arrow shots uh, accordingly. And now Klee needs no introduction, easiest, easiest magic user to just get results with. She does tons of damage. Now her bombs have an arc, but regardless of the arc, they're still powerful bombs and they can mob effectively now during 1.1 you did get a little nerf if, she, if those bombs hit grass sadly tick damage damages every character on the field including the enemies and yourself tick damage was ramped so Klee being squishy can get damaged really quickly so be careful when mobbing during the uh, or on the overworld and then for Razor, last but not least, everyone got him to C6 if you invested in Zhongli's banner. Or whoever decided to invest in the banner to get him to C6, congratulations, you have one of the best DPS carriers in the game. He effectively is one of the easiest ones on this tier list to build because of his cheap cost. And because of it, you just get a very powerful Claymore user to be able to mow down anything in your path and his unique multipliers make things easy now the wrestlelist kaching the reason why she's not an abyss god and in lower than others even though she can keep up with some of this damage sword users have the inherent problem of not being able to break shields so because they can't break shields they suffer from that they can't thwart shielded enemies but a smart player will be able to use them well so that's why she lands the demigod tier and for Mona, leans into support a lot more. <laughs> as simple as that. She's effectively a very strong 5-star. She can carry. She has a good element. A very powerful element at that. She can set up your uh, Deluxe Vaporizes. You can, she can set up characters' freezes. And in response, melts and vaporizes all together. Uh, but overall... She's a very good character to pick for Abyss itself. And for Beido and Ning Wong, these characters were here not too long ago. Ning Wong, very good DPS. She lacks some things other DPSs have, but she has a good ease of use. Geo is a very versatile element and does a lot of damage, but she just falls a little bit short from some of the other four stars on the list. And Beido, specifically, a very, once again, uh, a flexible unit similar to official but just not as good as official she has very flexible play style in terms of being able to react to the enemy she has a counter or a cross counter like i like to call it she holds down her elemental button 
and she can let go a swing to do a lot of damage and she can apply buffs to herself after countering properly for overall max damage and she can be in the dps slot as well so that flexibility is very very strong she's just not as strong as the best flexible unit in the game and we have twins twins completely free to play you start with these characters and they're a decent carry they actually their lifeline is actually very high you feel them start to teether out around abyss tier 9 or that ninth level floor and that's really when you start to feel the age of the twins but overall they have great crowd control and geo is a thing blowing things up with jongli is also a thing so overall the twins can be powerful you just need to be able to build them and monka w forever going to be a meme in the community amber just doesn't make the cut she's just too weak her mobbing capabilities are okay she's a bow user she doesn't really have anything like official does and against bosses her distraction dummy or her dummy that she throws does not pull bosses aggro which is a big fault in her kit and her q her the damage is not exceptional now for jongli's placement um i think jongli is a pretty strong carry but i don't think he's one of the best and the fault is of mihoyo nerfing him before release whatever he had previously made him very very strong but now he is just a useful unit in terms of damage so for the most part i'm putting Zhongli in the abyss demigod and the reason why i'm putting him over kaching is while kaching does a lot of damage and more damage than Zhongli, mind you for her uh elemental skill ability her charge attack abuse and her Q, while overall she has better damage, Yongli just has a better utility within the kit of his elemental skill, his tomes or his totems, and he has the ability to control the field pretty easily and pretty well. So for the most part, his elemental burst, if those who don't know, it petrifies and petrification is similar to freeze, although you do not get additional effects once you freeze the enemies. But petrification being able to stall out mobs, freeze them in place for a time to to recoup yourself and be able to redirect your offense is in fact a good thing. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, if for anyone who made it through to the end, there is a giveaway on Instagram right now. Click my link down below and like and follow to enter the giveaway. It's for an iTunes gift card for the US region only. And on top of that, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video or if you're new to the channel and you guys want more news, information and breakdowns just like these, also consider subscribing. For those who are already subscribed, don't forget to like and hit that notification bell and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.